It happened one night, the, the genesis of it was a Cosmopolitan magazine article called Night Bus. And he had read the article somewhere, like waiting in a doctor's office or getting a haircut or someplace like that. This is a casual thing. But he liked the story, and he asked Columbia to buy it for him. And they bought it, and they kind of put it away. And it came time to start thinking about another picture. And he pulled out Night Bus, and he and his favorite writer, Robert Riskin, began to think about how they, what could they do with this to make this a story. There were some changes that they made to it, which made it better. And then there were some changes that a friend of theirs, Miles Connolly, who was also a writer, had uh, given them. In any case, by the time they got the final script, it was a runaway heiress who was very bored and unhappy, but uh, a spoiled brat, but at the same time uh, would turn out to be quite a terrific lady. The male lead was a newspaper reporter, kind of down and out, wisecracking, uh, sort of carefree, and uh, now they had to cast the picture. Oh, your chariot awaiteth without it, almighty king. This is definitely not a Clark Gable type role. He hasn't been allowed to do these kind of roles at MGM. At MGM, he's always the big leading man, a big macho guy doing his stuff. Uh, this guy is a very different kind of guy. He drinks a little, wisecracks, uh, he's very flippant, uh, tells everybody to, where they get off. Um, as a pretty interesting character. Actually, for Clark Gable, very much up his alley. Excuse me, lady, but that upon which you sit is mine. I beg your pardon? Now listen, I put up a stiff fight for that seat, so if it's just the same to you, scram. Claudette Colbert had actually become a pretty big star and was working all the time, and, uh, but was in my dad's mind, quite perfect for this sort of spoiled brat rich era. Move over. This is a maybe they do. So my father and Mr. Riskin went to Claudette's house. They got an appointment to see her, and they went to her to pitch the picture to her. Well, they got there, and she was packing because she was going to leave the next day to go to Sun Valley. So I said, oh, you've got to listen to this. This is a great thing. And he was in Clark Gable and blah, blah, blah. And we're, no, no, no. First of all, I only have four weeks. You can't make a picture in four weeks. Secondly, my normal salary is $25,000 a week. And I know that Harry Cohen will never even pay that. I want double. What's the matter, child? Aren't you happy? <laughs> I thought so. I knew there was something on your mind. So they get Mr. Cohen on the phone and I said, this isn't going to work, Harry. She wants double her regular salary. He says, can you make the picture in four weeks? And my father says, yeah, I think I can. I've just got to be a hell of a job because we'd have to start tomorrow. Our vacation starts tomorrow. And Harry Cohen says, fine, make the deal. And you can make an old man happy so bad for yourself. If you change your mind, your car is waiting at the back gate. They whisk her off to Columbia, get ready. Wardrobe is very simple. If you see the picture, she only wears two things. She wears one thing through the whole movie and then a wedding gown. So it's pretty easy to get her dressed, you know. The next day, had their fittings and they started within another day. And, and my father had four weeks to finish the picture, had to finish the picture. Budget was $325,000, of which she got $50,000. I just had the unpleasant sensation of hearing you referred to as my husband. Claudette was complaining every day. Oh, he did. Mm -hmm. And the very last day of the picture, she told her friends, I've just finished the worst picture I've ever made in my life. Your ego is absolutely colossal. Yeah, yeah, not bad. How's yours? And yet on screen, they have this great chemistry. Get it, you crazy. You've got to come, come on, come on. Oh, 
What happened? Oh, just a road thief. Picks people up and then runs off with their things. What a racket. How'd you get in the car? Oh, I gave him a black eye for it and had to tie him up to a tree. How to shoot a picture, especially this picture, which is kind of a road picture, in four weeks. Well, one of the things you do is you don't, you can't build very many sets. And when you look at the picture, you'll see there's almost no set pieces. Ah, uh, hi, sister. You remember me, Shapley? Say, I I'm sorry about last night. Didn't know you was married to that guy. You should have told me right off. <laughs> the motel rooms were sets, but they're pretty easy to make, and, and one doubles the next for the next, so it's nothing. The bus is a set on a process stage with a process projection system behind it and, the, and guys jiggling it with, with the two by fours. Um, the rest of the time you're outside. And that's how they were able to shoot it in, in four weeks. He simplified the film as much as he could to make it producible within that time and then had a really good time making it. And that's the sort of thing he remembers of it. It was a lot of work but they had a lot of fun. Now, who had the fun? He and Mr. Gable had the fun. People were seeing this picture, and not only coming back to see it again, but bringing a few friends this next time. And so the groundswell for this picture became enormous. And it played in every little theater everywhere in the country. It held the record for the number of play dates for many, many years of any picture. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And everybody was totally amazed. Nobody could understand it. But the audience loved it. They loved this picture. Well, here's to the merry-go-round. It was also an enjoyable picture for the Academy, which was pretty, pretty different for Columbia. And all of a sudden, this picture gets five nominations. Best Actress, I hope you got your money. Best Actor, Best Picture, Best Script, and Best Director. Stay around and watch the fun. You'll enjoy it immensely. Just to get nominations was a big deal for Columbia. But to get the five major nominations with their one picture was a huge deal. Especially for this little picture that nobody had any faith in, except perhaps for my father and Bob Riskin. And even their faith was tested. So then, at the awards, the master of ceremonies was a man named Irving S. Com. And as you can imagine, when one picture begins to take every award, it's like every time they open the envelope, it's like the, he would say, it, and then the audience would yell, happened one night. When she got her award, she was packed and ready to go to Sun Valley. She'd only come to the awards because they finally talked her into it. She wasn't even going to skip that. So she's there. They announce it. She runs up, grabs it, says thank you, turns around, starts off the stage, then turns around, comes back, and just says, this, I owe this to Frank Capra. What happened? I haven't the slightest idea. So at least he knew that she knew. Many times actors don't realize what is being made. Good evening. Hope you and your husband rest comfortable. They see today's dailies, they see t tomorrow's, they see yesterday's, it's disjointed. Come on, come on, what are you going to do, stay out there all night? They don't know which takes are being picked, they don't know how it's being edited. They don't know what's in the director's mind of how this picture is going to actually be. So sometimes they don't realize what their part is like. Get Hank again. Hey, this. Get me a doctor, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. Hank, forget what I just told you. I'm just having a nightmare, that's all. Agnes! I think the experience on it happened one night led him towards this sort of one man, one film idea where the director is the creator and is ultimately responsible for failure, success, whatever, responsible for the film. Here's your lead. Love triumphant. Go on, hop to it. Okay. That doesn't mean he doesn't take ideas from people, doesn't change things, doesn't, uh, it isn't still a collaborative process, but at the end of the day, he felt that there was one person that had to be responsible for a film, so there would be that thread through it, and I think that's what you see through all of his films.